Preface When the masters explain the purpose of satsang, or spiritual discourse, they tell us that it is to awaken their audience to spiritual truth and to whet their appetite for spirituality. They explain that if even one phrase, one metaphor, one word strikes the listener's heart, it can alter the course of a person's life by turning around his thinking. That is the power of satsang, the power of the guru's words. This small volume contains 12 satsangs given by Maharaj Jagat Singh, who was the master at Dera Baba Jamal Singh in Bayas Punjab between 1948 and 1951. Sadar Bahadurji, as he was respectfully called, was initiated in 1910 by Maharaj Sawan Singh. Footnote. See Translator's Note for explanations of unusual usage and technical or Indian language terms. End footnote. He is remembered as an exemplary disciple and was popularly known even among the staff and students of the college where he taught in Layalpur as Guruji. Footnote. Layalpur is now in Pakistan and has been renamed Faisalabad. End footnote. Sadar Bahadur had only two interests his official duties, and his spiritual practice, both of which he performed with unusual fervor. He gave to his worldly work just the attention it needed, and for the rest devoted himself to the service of his own master, in particular to his real work of meditation. In 1948, Maharaj Sawan Singh appointed Sadar Bahadurji to be his successor. He served as the guru at Bayas until his death in October 1951. A story is told of Sadar Bahadurji that soon after initiation, he was influenced by a verse he heard from the Adi Granth. You've attained a human body. This is your chance to meet the Lord. No other work will help you. Find a devotee and worship only Nam in his company. Take refuge with him so you cross the ocean of existence. Otherwise, you'll waste this birth, died in illusion. On hearing this, Sardar Bahadur changed the day-to-day -day pattern of his life to the discipline he was best known for, one of singular application to his spiritual practice at any time he was not working for his livelihood. The satsangs in this collection are based on shabbats from either Swamiji or the Adi Granth, through them, Sadar Bahadurji again and again gives us the central message of all true mystics. Let go of your love for the world. Go inside and develop love for Nam. While he tells about the creator and the creation, about the inner regions, the false lure of the mind, and the realm of truth where the Lord abides, ultimately, he says, it all comes back to our relationship with our Guru. In Santmat, the way of the saints, Sant, or masters, we cultivate our relationship with the Guru in order to experience for ourselves the power of God, the Shabbat, or Nam, that He embodies. Sadar Bahadur emphasizes that Santmat is a path of action. If we work at the Nam practice, we will experience happiness from it. Let go of words and idle talk. Catch hold of Nam and do the practice. Quoting a Punjabi proverb, he says that our motto should be hands on the job, heart with the friend. Sadar Bahadurji inspired others to apply themselves to the practice of Santmat, not just during his short period as the master at Bayas, but also for many years before that as a devoted disciple serving his master. The discipline he nurtured came from his own experience. It was not an imposition on others, but a gift to all those who listened to his teachings. He himself was a living embodiment of those teachings. As these satsangs illustrate, he devoted his last years to helping others follow where he had gone. J.C. Sethi, Secretary, Radhaswami Satsang Bayas, March 2006 Translator's Note this collection of 12 discourses by Sadar Bahadur Jagat Singhji, delivered at the Dara during his time as master, are taken from the notes of two disciples who wrote them down as they were given. We lack an audio recording of Sadar Bahadurji's voice, 
but the notes admirably convey the essence as well as the impact of Sadar Bahadur's teachings, including the rigor, pithiness, humor, and charm so characteristic of his way of speaking. Holding Our Attention Sadar Bahadurji was a chemistry professor. His speaking style and vocabulary reflect that background, and his satsangs were notably short. When asked why he wouldn't speak for longer, he would say firmly, I know from experience that no one can concentrate on any topic for more than 45 minutes. Typically, Sadar Bahadur closely follows the couplets of the text he was commenting on. At times, he even anticipates the next couplet of the text, subtly introducing and discussing the idea of what the Pathi would chant next. The satsangs are peppered with rhetorical questions, an age-old device for waking up drowsy students. Questions engage us, encourage us to reflect, to review our preconceptions, to open up. Sometimes Sadar Bahadur uses questions to make us aware of something we have not considered before. Elsewhere, the questions leave us to fill in the blanks. A phenomenon that would surprise us today was that the Master's Pati would sometimes join in with a scriptural quote to illustrate what the Master was saying. Sadar Bahadurji sometimes paused to comment on the quote. At other times, he ignored it and went on with his own train of thought. The discourses may occasionally shock, puzzle, or confuse, and this may well have been Sadar Bahadurji's intent. As a longtime college professor, he must have known the value of challenging and perplexing his students. As the present master at the Dara says, it's when we throw up our hands in confusion and say, I give up that we are ready to learn. Conveying the message. Sadar Bahadur's use of dramatic language drives his teaching points home. But no, death arrives, the hawk flies away, and not a friend remains. In one line, he has conveyed the stark reality of the certain death everyone faces, including the person who has spent a lifetime immersed in the world with never a thought for his only real friend, the Master, who liberates him from the painful claws of death and rebirth. Referring to how paralyzed mind and soul are, until we are truly animated by Shabbat, Sadar Bahadurji uses a graphic image drawn from everyday life. Mind and soul are crippled. Without analysis or apology, he expresses how challenged we are until the soul is attuned to its essential Shabbat nature, and mind and soul are freed from the karmic load that has made them weak and disabled. We are trapped at the level of the mind, he says, forever harvesting a fodder crop of our own karmas, which grows again and again each time the top is cut off. One crop is finishing, while another is maturing, and a third is being born. So how can we escape the endless cycle of action and reaction and make ourselves receptive to the Shabbat or Nam? Sadar Bahadur gives us the solution. I tell you, if you open up and become empty, if you just once let go of the negative feelings of the mind, your heart will become empty. Just like that, attach yourself to Nam inside, and with the help of Nam, let out the negativity. A metaphor used in almost every satsang is the pala, the loose end of an unstructured garment like a shawl or sari. A child holds on to the mother's pala for security and reassurance. Disciples respectfully hold out their pala with both hands to receive the gift of prashad, food blessed by the master. Money and anything precious is tied safely in the pala. As a metaphor, it therefore evokes love, protection, safety, security. In Sadar Bahadur's usage, it connotes taking refuge with the master, receiving the blessing of initiation through him, devoting oneself to the practice the master gives, and thus leaving the world with something in one's pala, something of one's own. Drawing from his teaching background, Sadar Bahadur frequently uses classroom terms like topic, subject matter, and lesson. He says, you cannot study this subject without gurmat, the guru's wisdom. And 
It's when you receive the technique of nam that you pass. He uses the English word. He reminds us that we need to understand the guru's instructions or guidelines. Frequently, he refers to initiation as taking instruction from the guru. In one sentence, he expresses the A to Z of Santmat as a simple lesson to be learned. Hold on to the master's pala. Learn the lesson and go inside. That is the nam practice. He also uses educational terms to refer to the master. At times, he calls him a teacher, and in every satsang, he refers to the master repeatedly as someone who has experience in nam, someone who knows nam, an expert. The term expert, bakafkar, is neutral. It does not connote any religious tradition or even a notion of spirituality. Sadar Bahadur lifts the concept of mastership out of the arena of devotional expressions and into the arena of logic, objectivity, and expertise. His choice of words gets across the message that if we want to gain understanding of Nam, we need the guidance of an expert. A powerful teacher. Sadar Bahadurji's Punjabi speaking style was very different from the classical flow of his English letters. In Science of the Soul, and in the letters he wrote on behalf of the great master in Spiritual Gems, he was addressing the Western educated. The medium was literary, and his words flowed accordingly. But in these satsangs, we hear an echo of the way he spoke, and they reveal another facet of the master. Sparing, ardent, forceful, and delightfully colloquial. He was addressing Punjabis, farmers, housewives, and business people students, officials, and teachers. They all had strong links to their ancestral village homes and were molded and dyed in ancient family, social, and religious traditions. Whether they were Sikh, Hindu, or Muslim, his discourses used imagery familiar to people with a traditional farming background. Sowing and harvesting, plowing a field, guiding a herd of buffaloes, riding a stubborn horse and he was a master of their laconic, humorous, and evocative language style. The satsangs reflect Sadar Bahadurji's nature. Terse and highly disciplined, he did not meander in thought, word, or action, even if it meant people were shaken up or challenged. He gave facts, sometimes stern, even shocking, and did not encourage his audience to wallow in illusions. Not then, not now. Love for the world is dirt. But his words and manner were tempered always by the depth of his understanding and compassion. It is probable that in places the brevity and conciseness of Sadar Bahadur's comments on the Shabbats reflect the note-taker's haste. But contemporaries all agree they are typical of Sadar Bahadurji's style. Disciples say he spoke quietly and succinctly, brief and to the point. They say he stayed close to the Shabbat text without going into lengthy explanations. These satsang notes amply confirm their memories. Sadar Bahadur distills the essential message of the mystics and gives information in manageable pieces, a little at a time. Each nuanced phrase is worthy of reflection. With his natural inclination for brevity, he offers a strong dose of subtle medicine condensed and intense. We have always heard that Sadar Bahadur was a man of few words. In these satsangs, we see it. The Master as a Beacon of Love Sadar Bahadurji begins one satsang. The words may vary, the subject matter is the same. We sit up and listen because his words do vary. His unfamiliar expressions awaken us to the depth and meaning of the path we are on. Photographs of Sadar Bahadur reveal the uncompromising intensity of his concentration and dedication. Those who knew him point out that what the written satsangs fail to communicate is the brilliance of the love shining from the Master, a love that above all else is the essence of the relationship of the Master with his disciples. As Sadar Bahadur himself said, inside each person is a treasure trove of love, a storehouse of devotion for the Lord, lying there brimful. There's not just a drop or two, there are oceans full to the brim. 
The gift of all true masters is the seed of love they nurture within us. They awaken us to the love that is latent in all. The final satsang in the present collection, a distilled poem on love and longing, is fragrant with that love of the master. Fifty-five years after Sadar Bahadur passed on, his disciples still recall the special memories their master created for them, the dialogues, the looks, the love, as though they took place yesterday. One initiate recalls Sadar Bahadur emphatically saying at the end of his initiation, Now you have been given the method. Practice this method every day for two and a half hours, whether in one, two, three, or four sittings. And if you don't see the light after two weeks, come and grab me by the arm. Punjabi and Technical Issues Citations from the Adi Granth are taken verbatim from the Manmohan Singh translation, Sri Guru Granth Sahib, English and Punjabi translation, published by the SGPC, the Central Sikh Governing Board in Amritsar. Words read parenthetically are literal translations added by the editor for clarity. In the Indian tradition, saints, sant, and elders are referred to deferentially with courteous honorifics such as Sahib, Maharaj, or G, that are added before or after a name, or used alone to refer to someone with respect. In the notes, however, relatively few honorifics have been used, and in the translation we have further simplified the titles for lack of comfortable equivalence in English. At the beginning of the satsang, Sadar Bahadur may refer to the writer of the Shabbat with the respectful Guru Nanak Dev Ji, or Hazur Swami Ji Maharaj, but throughout the rest of the satsang, he often referred to them with a simple kahandene, a polite plural verb form rendered in English as he says. The Path of the Masters Himself the exemplary disciple, Sadar Bahadurji communicated the essential nature of the mystic path. Our hope is Nam, and to find our way back to our spiritual origins on the path of Nam, we need a master. Sadar Bahadur described in no uncertain terms our contribution on this journey towards God-realization. When the Lord bestows His grace, He turns the key inside you and love for the Lord awakens within. We do nothing. It is only when the Lord turns the key that we find a master and begin the Nam practice. This translation is dedicated to the Vakafkar, the expert, our exemplar, benefactor, and friend. For any shortcomings in the translation, we have only ourselves to hold account. Publications Department, Radhaswami Satsang Bayas.